Welcome to What the Flick, Ben Mankiewicz, Matt Atchity here to talk about the man with the iron fist, the directorial debut of... The RZA. The RZA. Of the Wu-Tang Clan. This is basically Wu-Tang the movie. Now, if you know enough about Wu-Tang Clan, their I, mythos... And, and I don't. <laughs> I, no, rule number one, Wu-Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. I'm not, uh, I'm not diminishing, I'm just so saying I'm ignorant. Their, their mythos is steeped in kung fu movie history, uh, this is the movie that arguably the RZA was born to make. Uh, they <laughs> reference old Shaw Brothers movies all the time. This basically is a mishmash of everything you could think of that would belong in a 70s era yes. Shaw Brothers film. Uh, I, let's watch the trailer. So there's, there's a couple of uh, production notes here that I think are totally relevant. This movie was, uh, uh, the RZA wanted it at uh, four, four hours. RZA, who plays the blacksmith, by right. the way. So who, who wanted it? Wrote and directed. Co-wrote with Eli Roth. Right. The movie was produced and by Roth and, and Tarantino. Um, wa wanted it at, came in at four, four hours. hours. It, the, and then, so his suggestion to Roth, and Tarantino presumably was let's do two, let's do two movies let's and kill Bill and it up. Wiser heads prevail. And Roth was like, or we'll <laughs> or, do an hour and a half. Or we can make one 90 minute movie and you could drop 150 minutes from your right. from your and, and as the story goes, at one point Riza got so pissed off about having to cut things and because cutting from four hours to an hour and a half, I mean that that's a lot of cutting. At one point he got so m pissed off, left the edit bay for two weeks and just had to take a break. Well the movie probably, you know, smoke a little. This movie Maybe. looks like a movie that is longer, that was intended to be longer. Yes. Because there are characters in it that clearly that was set up for some big dramatic fight between two rivals, except you're like, who the hell is this guy? And things right. get mentioned, you know, right. be careful about these traps, and then... Nothing. Right? But, but, but the characters really got me, because there were yeah. clearly characters that were obviously supposed to be way more important than they right. were, and... You know, there's or this when there's recognition of one character being, you know, with this title, you right? Know, oh, right. Black Widow, right? And, you're like, and then you're like, right? And this one guy's got a hood and he's talking the whole time weird, right. and we never see his face. Uh, there's right. a big reveal, and, happens, and then he has a fight, and who cares? And what yeah. happens in a lot of old kung fu movies, yeah. and we've seen Tarantino do this in Kill Bill, is that something will happen, and then you get that immediate backstory, right? And a lot of those, I think, got cut out here to make a movie that comes in in an hour and a half. It's very repetitive, it looks the same. It's hard to tell who the hero is. Um, I don't know that that matters either. It's definitely spread out, sort of, there right. are three, but none of their stories forged completely a as a result, right. as far as giving a total crap about what happens to these guys. If one of them, and maybe they do die, I'm not revealing, but depending on what happens to them, I don't know that I really care. Well, I think it just doesn't do a good job of putting the black hats on the bad guys and the white hats on the good guys. It's, it's, and, and you kind of want that a little bit in a movie like this. It's, it's hard to know who the heroes are. The most developed character in it is, uh, is the Jackknife, I think, Russell Crowe's character, um, because we at least see, you know, we see that, you know, there's some, he's a, he's a noble warrior. He, he only kills the people who are, have earned the right to die, but we see his debaucherous side. We get right. to know him. Which is very oh, funny. Which is funny. It's the best scene in the movie, sort of his, his, uh, his experience with some hooahs. Um, but, that, but that said, it's weird that Russell Crowe's in the movie. It's weird that that's Russell Crowe. It does not have to be Russell Crowe. It is not, I don't think, enhanced. I, I can't believe they got him to do this I, movie. It's not even, and it's awesome. It he seems, looks like he's having a great time. It seems like Crowe thought that this was a bigger... But you can kind of yeah. see like a twinkle in his eye. Like he knows he's having a great time. Yeah, I guess. I, I, I kept thinking, wow, what a lot of money wasted on Russell Crowe <sighs> for this. This is a 70s kung fu movie. Right. Uh, and so there's all kinds of gruesome death in it. Um, really, yeah, really, I mean, arms really. Are, arms are cut right. off, and you see tendons and right. blood spurting, and and you kind of see the Eli Roth influence. There. Totally, but that's it. And so you had a number of moments, and there's some crazy uh, knife suits, and so there's all kinds of <laughs> I you need know a new suit of knives. I need a new suit of knives, <laughs> and they're knives that go in one ear and out the other, and they, you stab the guy's tongue and pull it out, wrap it around and choke it, and hang him from a tree. I mean, there's right. all, but there's all kinds of stuff like that, and you were given the appropriate reaction. You were like, oh. You know, oh, like, that's the kind of thing that's supposed to happen in this movie. I felt shortchanged by those. Like, frequently, I didn't know what had just happened. 
<laughs> like, I don't know whether I'm already my dad and I can't follow stuff that's edited that you quickly. You don't watch enough kung fu movies, It clearly. seemed too quick. Like, I was like, so what happened? Did he stab him through the eyes? Yes. And did it come out the back? It went too quick. <laughs> I felt like, the, and so then it felt to me like, have, as this editing covering up for what maybe they don't have. Like, it was a little, a couple of beats uh, too quick, I thought, and it diminished some of the See, intentional See, I'd maintain that that's, that's this we- it is this weird mix of kind of like the Eli Roth style gruesomeness and th- kind of the way the old kung fu movies go where stuff happens and, and it's part of the way those are shot is because they don't have budgets and they don't have effects back right. in the day, right? Now they actually can do that and I'm not sure that that necessarily occurred to the RZA. Yeah, like, oh seemed, look, I can, I, I can I, take time with this. I just think there was needed to be a, a little more time in at least maybe six of the 27 <laughs> pretty identical fight scenes that happened in the movie. Oh, I don't think they're identical. They were no, cool. No, I they, thought they were very fun, though. Some it's were cool. Great some, wire work, great fight scenes. It was great. It was great. Totally work. over the top, ridiculous stuff happening. I, I, you know, I'm going to raise my score. Oh, what are you raising it to? I, I'm going to raise my score up to a seven and a half. I think this movie is flawed. It goes back to the exact same thing. But I think it's great. Exactly. That's why I raised it. Um, Except now I can't figure out what it was. 6.1. Yeah. Okay. So I I didn't like it. I gave it a 4.6. Also, he's not not good yet, the Rizzo. I mean, he's got... No, but he's he's on the hook to direct. uh, He's apparently signed a deal to direct. No, I meant on performance-wise. Like, I actually thought he was okay in this. I mean, it's one thing. It's one thing, and he it, it's actually similar to his role in Entourage, which I thought got better as time went on. But I just, he, he's a performer, so my hunch is yeah. he, he ends up pulling it off. Um, but there needs to be a little more than just sullen. I mean, like this was—he was an ideal guy to walk around with a hood and take I it off. I will say and he look was morose. smart enough to give him a ro- himself a role that calls for a certain yeah. sullenness. Yes, I agree. I just—I'd be curious whether he can do it. I'd like to see him challenge so himself. So he's a—he's an interesting guy to look at, and he's clearly got some talent. So the other thing I want to point out now that we've talked about the score, um, for people to go and watch this, Silver Lion, the head bad guy, supposed to be Prince. Supposed to be Prince? Yeah. I didn't get that. But yeah. I, I, the whole time I'm thinking, oh my God, he's oh, acting like Prince. Oh, right. The son. Yeah. The one who became, yeah, 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 yeah. No, not yeah. the son. Not the son. No, no, no. The Silver Lion. The, the guy who. Right. But I was thinking, I was thinking Gold Lion. By the no. way, this is why this movie's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, uh, right. Silver Lion. Who's pretty good. Who's pretty good. But and with, with he, the big hair, with the, the big eye hair, makeup, and yeah. just the way he like yeah. carried himself. I'm like, oh my prancy. God. That guy should be in yeah. purple and ruffles. Yeah, that's right. It's not a bad point. Okay, so I gave it a 4.6. You gave I'm, it a... I gave it a 7.5. Ridiculous. All right. Come on. Anyway, 6.1. I'm Matt Atchity, and I endorse this movie. Yeah. 6.1 for the man with the uh, iron fist. Uh, by the way, it's because he has... Iron fist? Iron fist. It's not a, uh, not a euphemism, not a metaphor.